Hi, I'm here to present the topic model predictive control and its applications. This is the overview of uh, today's lecture. We will be uh, introducing the model predictive control, then go on to the mathematical formulation of model predictive control, the basic concept behind model predictive control, the terminologies that we'll be using in MPC. Then we will formally define an MPC. Historical evolution, we'll go through the historical evolution of uh, model predictive control. And then we begin with unconstrained optimization. Then we'll see some of the reading material and then summarize this lecture. This is the analogy of uh, model predictive control. We'll uh, explain it in terms of uh, playing chess. We will decide in chess, we will decide the very next move based on our uh, current situation and predict opponent's move. A, you, a player will know the moves of each piece in a chess board. So based on that, uh, he can plan his activity and move uh, the next move. He will also predict what are the possibilities of the opponent's uh, move and either he will attack the opponent or he will defend the attack from the opponent. So our next move in a chess will be based on the prediction of the uh, future strategies of the opponent. So it can also be like a planning activity of our day-to-day -day work. If a work starts at 9 a.m., we plan the activities for the next eight hours and what we do is we implement our planned activity for the next one hour and after one hour we will uh, analyze how much work we have done and based on that we will plan after one hour we will plan again for next eight hours and this planning activity is repeated for every fresh hour until task is completed so uh, we will plan for eight hours, we will implement for one hour. After one hour, we will again analyze how much work we have done and then we will plan again for the next eight hours. And this planning activity is repeated until the task is completed. So these are the two analogies for MPC. So here the requirements are we need a model. In case of chess, uh, our brain has the model of each movement on, of the piece in a chess board. So uh, based on that, we can predict uh, the uh, opponent's moves. So there, that is the model. And in planning activity, we know what work is to be done. So uh, based on that, we plan the activity for the next uh, eight hours. And we need some uh, uh, instrument for accessing our current activity. That is measurement needs to be done. In case of chess, we look at the chess board and we know where the position of each piece of the chess board is there. So that measurement is taken. In case of planned activity, after one hour, we need to analyze how much work has to be done. So there is some measurement uh, going on there. And uh, another uh, requirement is the instrument to implement the planned activity. So we need to realize the control. Uh, so uh, for us to execute, we need uh, some uh, actuate or something to be uh, to implement that planned activity. So that is another requirement. So these these three are the primary requirements uh, for an MPC. Like we need a model, we need uh, measurement, and we need uh, something to realize our control. So this is a mathematical formulation of a model predictive control. We have a system and uh, the system is uh, represented in discrete fashion like this, xk plus one, next state is equal to axk plus buk. Here xk is the present state, state at the kth instant, and uk is the control, control at the kth instant. And we solve an optimization problem and uh, we are trying to minimize this cost function and find a control sequence such that this cost function is minimized. That is our optimization problem. And our objective function, this cost function, is uh, uh, mostly a, a quadratic cost function which penalizes the state as well as the control moves. And we will have a terminal cost. I'll explain later slides what a terminal cost is. Now the advantage of a model predictive control is that it can take into account the constraints of a system while uh, formulating the problem itself. 
So here, these are the control constraints as well as the state constraints. So in, in every practical problem, there will be some constraints in the actuator. So those are the control constraints. We can we cannot uh, give infinite amount of uh, control input to the uh, actuator. So those are there are practical limitations. So that that will come under this control constraints, and the states of the system cannot go beyond certain values. Say for example, in a tank system, we have a uh, level of 0 to 10 centimeter. So after 10 centimeter, the water overflows. So the that state of the uh, state is nothing but the level of the tank. That level cannot go beyond a certain limit. So those are the constraints on the states. And uh, those can be taken into account while formulating the optimization problem. In terminal set also we'll see later. Like the, those are these terminal cost and terminal set, all those comes when we explain about the stability of uh, this controller. Now, this is a basic concept of an MPC. Say, for example, we are at a TKth instant, and uh, these are the actual outputs in the past. So, we have a set point and we need to track that set point. So based on our model, which we have in our hand, we will try to predict what are the future states. So this prediction horizon is the uh, instances until we predict the states of the system. So uh, these are the past control moves and these are the predicted control moves such that the states, is, states are taken to the set point. So uh, a control horizon is nothing but the, we will be planning until uh, M moves, control moves. So when we implement those moves, we will get the uh, states like this. That is our prediction at the kth instant. So uh, at TK plus one, this is at TK and this is at TK plus one. We will again analyze how much uh, the state has moved. The dotted line is the predicted value at the kth instant. But actually, due to the disturbance or the model inaccuracy, the actual state reached only so much. So now we are again analyzing, measuring the state. And again, for P instances, we will try to predict the future states. And we will try to uh, get the control sequence for M instances. And uh, um, this first control input again will be implemented. Here at TKth instant, we have implemented only one control, and then at TK plus one, we are re optimizing, we are recalculating the redoing the optimization problem again based on whatever measurement it has at TK plus one instant. So that is the concept of MPC. So we will try to predict the future and take actions according to the uh, predicted value. So these are the few terminologies that we will be using in model predictive control. Uh, the prediction horizon, as we have seen earlier, is the time instances until which we will be predicting the future. And we will be solving an optimization problem to find our control sequence. Even though we find a control sequence, we will implement only uh, uh, one control uh, input at the present instant. There are uh, cases where we will implement more than one control input. We'll come to that later. But uh, in, in MPC, we'll be implementing uh, the first control input alone. And we have a, we are finding a control sequence. So sequence of inputs that is to be given so that the states are taken to the set point. Control horizon, as explained earlier, it is the time instance until which we will design the control. The length of the control sequence will be until the control horizon. So terminal set is nothing but the set of values which are nearby the set point. So within that, the constraints will not be active. So it will be equivalent to a, a state feedback control within the terminal set. This we will see when we are explaining about the stability of MPC. Now objective function of the cost function is a, normally a quadratic cost function as uh, we have seen in the formulation. MPC formulation like uh, quadratic cost function that is the performance that we need to attain uh, 
and our control sequence will be uh, trying to attain uh, the performance uh, of the cost function. Now, moving horizon window is nothing but the uh, time instant. This window which we have seen earlier, that prediction horizon, it is like a receding concept. We will explain that uh, later. So, after two three slides, we will be uh, seeing what why it is called a moving horizon window. So that uh, prediction horizon uh, p horizon at kth instant it was next uh, p instances at k plus one instant it was uh, uh, next p instances like that so that uh, p instant is fixed so prediction horizon is fixed we'll see that in next slides now this is the definition of mpc model predictive control refers to a class of algorithm that utilizes explicit process model to compute a manipulated variable profile that will uh, optimize a performance objective predicted over a future time interval subject to the constraints. Here the main terms are uh, shown in the bold. So prediction MPC essentially requires a model that is used to predict the future states and it is solving an optimization problem to find a control sequence. So uh, the optimization problem uses the predicted values using a model and it will take into account the constraints. So our final output, what we get out of the MPC is the manipulated variable, a sequence of control, se control values and we will implement one of the control value and then move on to the next instant and repeat this process again. Now, what are the advantages of MPC? MPC can handle large scale systems with the many control variables. It is a systematic method for dealing with the constraints on input and the states. But there are a few limitations for MPC. The primary limitation is its computational requirement. At each instant, we need to run an optimization problem and find a control sequence and implement the present control. So at the optimization problem needs to be solved at each instant. So it requires a lot of computation at each instant. And areas of application. In, initially, the MPC was introduced in process control industry, but later on it expanded its application to power systems, power electronics, robotics, economics, etc it is uh, also used in civil engineering so there are uh, plenty it is widening its uh, area of applications now we'll go through uh, the history of mpc uh, mpc was uh, initially started at uh, shell oil refineries in 1970s and then uh, one of the significant improvement was uh, the proposal of a dynamic matrix controller uh, in 1979. This uh, was uh, proposed based on FIR and step response models, finite impulse response and step response model. So uh, the matrix being dynamic is the essential uh, component of a dynamic matrix controller. So uh, the model is created using finite impulse response or a step response. Now after that, um, uh, the state space model based uh, uh, MPC was uh, proposed in 1988 and it was uh, uh, popularized in 1993 by uh, Clark and the nonlinear uh, MPC was suggested in 1995. So uh, the other improvements are quadratic dynamic matrix controller, which was proposed in 1986, transfer function model based MPCs. The model is based on transfer function. It was proposed in 1984. Generalized predictive control is a significant improvement. It was proposed in 1987. So uh, the other improvements are like nonlinear model predictive control proposed in 1995. And explicit MPC, uh, it will take all the online computational requirement to offline. So uh, the computer, the disadvantage of primary disadvantage of MPC is try, getting trying to overcome using explicit MPC. And distributed MPC was proposed in 2007, 2008. 
and th that again uh, is a concept where uh, earlier mpc was used as a centralized controller and uh, the plant will have uh, several decentralized controllers that will be pid controllers so mpc essentially controls these pid controllers so uh, that in distributed mpc what they do is they will uh, have uh, distributed many mpc controllers controlling the uh, lower level so uh, re another improvement was a reinforced learning which was uh, approximate in programming which was suggested in 2003 economic mpc which was suggested in 2010 so uh, the uh, area the variety of mpcs that suggested gets uh, uh, there are many uh, different variety of mpcs uh, robust mpc was suggested in 1997 so uh, we will see few of uh, the different types of mpcs uh, in the final lecture and uh, this is about the history of mpc we will next uh, see about the basic components of mpc in the next class